So hey guys, it's Zayant again, and it's time for my positive review of Titanfall on the same map that I did my negative review of Titanfall on. Well, it's not so much a review as it is an in initial impressions. I still don't think I have enough time in the game to give it a proper review. I have maybe 15 hours, and if it's a multiplayer-only title, I want 20, if not more. But in this video, I this is the first time I was playing with a full party. I was playing with Mantis701. Scanner Barkley was in the team speak with us. We had Chalk One. We had Peekaboo Bang in here with us, and it was just—it was a really fun time. And the thing about playing with a full party is, you know, in your mind that you're probably going to win, and you're probably going to win by a landslide. Now, this is not always the case. I've played in full parties in other games: Battlefield, Call of Duty, Titanfall. Not yet, where we've gotten absolutely stomped by a group of randoms. You know. It happens sometimes. Sometimes you're not having a good game. The session, a couple of games before this, I was playing like complete and total crap. This was the first good game I got. It's on Hardpoint Domination on Demeter. And it was a good time. But I want to talk about what I love about Titanfall. Because last time I said all the things, well, most of the things that I didn't care for. And I want to start with the weapons. Yes, I th I want... Now, this is, the, this is the key term. Want more weapons. I don't need them. There are more than enough weapons to keep my attention, I think, because if you go back to a game like COD 4, which is the closest comparative game I can make to Titanfall as far as mechanics are concerned and the level of content is concerned, there's not that many guns because it's a balance issue. And I've talked about this elsewhere, but I want to say it here on my own channel. If you have a ton of guns, there's really, it's really hard to get the balance right. And the way that DICE did it with Battlefield 4, at the very least in the Assault Rifle category, was every gun has the same damage model. It's 25 out to like 15 meters or even shorter. And then at 30 meters, it's at 17.5 damage. And that's across the board. The only thing that differentiates the gun is their recoil pattern. That's a very easy way to balance guns, I think. In a game like Titanfall, where the times to kill are somewhere between Call of Duty and Battlefield, and when you have a lot to spend a lot of time developing the title, you don't have a lot of time to balance the weapons, it's best to consider just a few weapons that, that are very, very differently, not just in damage model, but in handling, in speed, and all these important things, if you have too many guns, you spend too much time balancing everything. And that's one of the things that Ghosts got right. For the most part was the gun balance. Now, there are of course better weapons than others in both Titanfall and Call of Duty, any of them. But they all feel different, not just in how long they take to kill, but in how they handle, and how they shoot, and how they fire, all this kind of good stuff. Another thing I love is the balance of the pilot versus Titan. A lone pilot can, if he's good at his job, take down a single Titan. But he cannot take down two. At least, not in any significant speed. He can take down two because they give you more than enough ammunition to take down two or even three Titans if you hit every shot. Trouble is, the Titans can actually move and unless your Titan pilot is lacking in a brain or is a very stupid auto Titan, he's probably going to move and you're not going to hit every shot. But in a direct confrontation, a Titan will probably always beat a pilot. The pilots have to outthink Titan pilots. For example, if you want to, if you're rodeoing a Titan, but you don't want to have to deal with the pilot, wait for them to jump out because invariably, if they don't have electric smoke, they will probably jump out to, you know, not let you kill their Titan. Just plant a couple satchel charges on it, wait for them to jump towards you, detonate the charges, boom, you've killed the pilot, you're left with an auto Titan, those things are a cinch to take care of, and you've got yourself a dead Titan, and you've outplayed not just outgunned a Titan and its pilot. But Culprit mentioned that Titanfall is essentially just a mishmash of a whole bunch of different already established mechanics. And I like that. I don't think they needed to bring anything particularly new to the table when they're already bringing some new stuff with the map design. And it's just generally a good time because Titanfall is not built to 
dominate the market. It's built to be a, it's built to dominate the market based on its fun factor, not on its innovations. That's one of the things that I think Call of Duty and Battlefield have tried to push a little too far, is that we are trying to innovate. We must innovate. We must be the first to do this, that, and the other thing. Respawn thought, must have said to themselves, we don't need to do some crazy innovation as long as we can make something that's entertaining and that captures the imagination. And so when they mashed all these mechanics together, Mech Warrior, Halo Jumping, Call of Duty Gunplay, Speed of both the Titan and the Pilot, all of these things come together to form a wonderful chicken noodle soup of game, if you're going to indulge me in an absolutely terrible metaphor. And I love them for doing that. Because, again, innovation for its own sake really serves no purpose. There must be a purpose behind everything you do, much in the way that the map design of Titanfall serves as an inspiration to other designers. Every, pretty much every part of the map serves a purpose. Even in the best mo ghost maps, even in the best Black Ops 2 and Modern Warfare 3 maps, there are places that they serve no purpose. And so I love Titanfall for its map design. I love it for the satisfaction of the pilot kill after you've been killing grunts, because the grunts are patently useless. But I love the fact that they're there simply because they give you something to do. Someone like me with an attention span of a squirrel, yeah, again, the squirrels, I need something to keep my attention. And in a game like Counter-Strike, the maps are small enough and the routes are known enough that there's always going to be action because, again, the maps are more than small enough to accommodate six on six. And TM Fortress 2 is the same. The maps are small. There's always something to shoot at. If this game were just 6v6 pilot on pilot with their titans, you know, okay, so it's six pilots, six titans on six pilots with six titans. Yeah, you'll probably always see something to shoot at, but you'll never get that satisfaction of, oh, it's a pilot. How are we going to play this? How is he going to interact with the grunts? How is he going to interact with the environment? How am I going to do the same such that I can completely dominate? It's a question you have to ask yourself. And it's a question that's asked every second of every game. Because you never know if the grunts hold a pilot, or if the two pilots you're fighting are in fact just really intelligent grunts for whatever reason. And I'll be honest with you, I like the fact there are so few game modes. Because really there's no need for a million game modes if really the only ones people, people play in Call of Duty are Team Deathmatch and Domination. Now, I will say I like Kill Confirmed. I like that mode a lot. But Crisis did Kill Confirmed best. The Kill Confirmed part got you your streaks. And if you know that your game only really needs three or four game modes, there's no reason to make any more. Because if you look at the player counts, even in something like Battlefield, where there are quite a few game modes, or like Ghosts, where, or Black Ops 2, where there's just a laundry list of game modes, you look at the 15 play modes you could be doing, maybe three of them have over a thousand players at any one time. So there's no real reason to add any more. And lastly, I love the aesthetic of Titanfall. It's not as colorful as something like Black Ops 2 or Modern Warfare 2. It, the colors aren't as saturated. Indeed, a lot of my color correction is to make it look more saturated, make the colors brighter. But if you look at a map like Demeter, you have this wonderful sunset in the distance. You have the moon. You have the ships in the sky. You look at something like Smuggler's Cove, which should not look good. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's the home for pirates. It should not look pretty. All of this comes together to make this very interesting sci-fi element. And I would love to talk more, but I've run out of time. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm going to put some links in the description, eventually, for some videos that are going to go up around the internet. And I'll see you on the next one.